doing well there's a lot to talk about today today so this will be a a pot of tea and you might as well start a batch of scones or scones or however you say them in your world uh, well now we know what the auguries regarding snakes were we will talk about that in a bit uh, coming in this morning uh, the driving on the road I saw two abandoned cars one had ploughed through a barrier another one had just stopped at the side and this is highway die brought about by the transubstantiation of course and also people like things like stopping in the middle of the the, the, the fast lane on the on, on the dual carriageway it just uh, unable to park inside a parking space their nervous systems are now have now been draw, destroyed by the boy I say boy and Dr. Jo John Campbell last night regardless of him being trying to covering his own ass you know I don't care if he's covering his own ass I don't care of any of that stuff uh, the fact is he's getting the information on I had this top oncologist in the UK a guy who'd published 500 peer reviewed sorry 50 I think peer, peer, peer reviewed papered maybe 500 I oh yeah 500 I think and had something like 25,000 citations and is still an active cancer doctor uh, is the is as one of the many but the most most prominent he had a guy called Dag Leash who said that you know there's a absolute cause and effect between uh, the rooster the roost the foghorn leghorns and a uh, recurrence of cancers particular melanomas and uh, these turbo cancers out of the blue uh, directly related to a collapse in the immune system hey, it's you know I'll see that so and I was looking at I was what I was I was walking around yesterday town and I was looking at some of the young people and so many of them looked like so many of the young people look like they have AIDS it's they have this look about them that I haven't seen since the AIDS days of the 80s in New York and the guys you know queuing up outside of hospitals for free AZT they have that look about them uh, total total destruction of their immune systems and you know I, I hate to say I predicted it but it wasn't that I predicted it. it was it was the obvious conclusion of anyone who read uh, the documents the peer-reviewed published documents on the the risks associated with the transubstantiation that this was all coming but this this morning is the first morning and of course like I saw it four or five ambulances this morning is the first morning that I've really seen firsthand the bodies in the streets scenario you know that's the first time I've seen it and Naomi Wolf had an amazing video this week about and this is remember in the early days as we were talking about this stuff how it people we know who had been rooster boosted it seems to me if you did the first two you're actually in this you're actually quite safe if it's only if you did the rooster booster and the boy say boy and then you know you know the rest from that point on that you're in you're fucked but uh we, we we one of the first things i noticed about the in the early days and it came after the second one not the, the first one and before the rooster boost there was personality changes in people that had been transubstantiated you know to the uh to number two and uh, she was talking about this and it was like everything i'd noticed i've been noticed i i see and i see it all the time now Ch parents who are not embracing their children or showing protective custody towards young baby young infants or toddlers little kids who can walk and they're walking around the streets and the parents are like And the kids are like, you know, they're, they're ready to walk under a bus or, be, a, you know, a Jamie Bulger job be just taken away. And, um, yeah, I've noticed that too. I've noticed you don't see teenage boys and girls walking down the streets holding hands anymore. That's all gone. There's no puppy love anymore. And you see couples who are just like in functioning. They just got married and they're just functioning. And it, 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 the, the feelings have been switched off. You can see as clear as anything that their feelings, their emotions, their feelings, their vital spark is when she talked about chi and prana and she says there's no word in the Western tradition. 
Well, the, the soul is probably the word we use, but in, within Kabbalism, as a Jew, she should know this, but she probably doesn't look into it. She's a very smart woman otherwise. Uh, she seems to have laid off slagging, attacking the pagans, which was it's ever since my article on her, rebuttal to her came out, which is fair play, you know, good, that's fine. And, um, you know, I, I didn't have any problem with her as a person. I just wish she wouldn't pick on pagans. We have no power in this world at all. But... Uh, she um she was it was awful and, and and babies that are born without emotionality they're just they're just humans they're just it's is there anyone that a paul murphy the people for profits td in this country is not only said his baby is no gender but he also referred to it as it in one in one one particular episode i remember when he was pretend, pretend that it was in danger, it was in danger, from far right, far right, and um, no feelings, no emotions to his child. That's why Juniper is going to be raised without a gender, because he doesn't care enough about to do anything about it. But um, what if you know? So that's it. That's all. That's all come to light now. That whole that whole thing now it's it's a fact like not only have the people who used to say be on this channel last year saying oh we'll be back to, to hold you accountable when all your predictions of like you know massive aids outbreak and body you know and people dropping dead doesn't come to pass not only have they not come back but a lot of those counts are been dormant because i saved their names so that we can assume that they're all they're all you know in a lime pit somewhere as well you know part of the unexpected and suddenly you know not that i'm both gloating or i'm glad it happened to them it's just here we are you know i mean the one you know the information was out there it's thinking fucking deadly don't take it and your man dad leash on campbell last night said and by the way i'm never going to stop talking about this those of you who are like oh move on no i'm never going to stop talking about it yeah i know we're out of lock the only way we can we're out of lockdown but the only way we're going to prevent it is to stop to keep talking about it they want they want a generation to forget what went on, and and the normies all have you know, they have the memory the memories of tadpoles or amoebas. So they don't remember anything, but we have to keep talking about them and uh, hold them for what they did to us. And uh, so tough shit. If you want me to change the subject on that, I'm never going to happen. But uh, Dag Leash was saying that he made a, a succinct point: if you need a second booster, the needlecraft doesn't work. And you'd be mad to take it. If you've been, if you've gone as far as the foghorn leghorn, and you're still getting the rona, and then you get a booster, then you're not only are you stupid because the boost, it's obvious that the the, the transubstantiation isn't working, but you're also now doing damage to yourself, and because you're put, you're you're using yourself as a human lab rat for corporate profits. And that's exactly it. Now, the snake auguries, we've been bombarded with snake auguries and serpents rising and all this stuff, and I've been trying to figure out what it is. And then yesterday, you know what happened. It all took off. It all went down in Israel. And look, my feelings on the thing are that Israel is the only country in the Middle East where I could be a pagan and not worry and not be hung from a a, a, a crane. Uh, Israel is the only country in the Middle East where someone like Christian Morris could be, you know, a gay man and not be thrown off a building for children to watch for as a public sport. So that's always been my opinion of it. Israel is the only country in the Middle East that has a large pagan population who are, you know, they're Semitic pagans. Israel is the only country in the Middle East, except outside Lebanon, and that's because of a Christian heritage that has large minorities that are allowed, that are given tolerance, including 1.5 million Muslims. So, you know, I know all you truthers on the spliffs on, are all like, you know, the spliff is cast spinning. The, the first of the 50-50 slips of spliffs you have the day just flew out of your mouth, and you're, you're rattling the can of little lager that you've been drinking all night. But, yeah... <laughs> That's the fact of it, okay? Now, there's questions I want to know that would know here um, and ask, right? There seemed there was there has been a series of events 
leading up to this. Okay, let's talk about the hate speech laws in every country. Who are they targeting? Far right, and in Ireland, the far right is a completely imaginary concept that doesn't exist, right? Now, and there's, where's the violence? There is none. You know, where where uh, a politician was called a name and suddenly they're acting like it was, a, you know, 9-11 or something, okay? And another politician dropped their phone and claimed that their children were being murdered in the streets. You know, this is what it's like by the far right. Last weekend, there was a march by Antifa in London of these middle-class drones all dressed in black and carrying the Antifa flag in a scene very similar to the beginning, to the end of the movie Children of Men, where all these factions had taken off. On Wednesday, I think it was, Wednesday or Thursday, in the Champions League, Celtic, that child sex trafficking, tra trafficking organization, soccer club, in Glasgow that claims to be Irish and is about as Irish as, like, you know, Val Dunigan's Rafferty's motor car. Uh, they're more British and actually very incredibly British. And uh, unveiled the giant Antifa banner. Now, anyone who has an Antifa banner or flag within their... Within their... Um, profile pics always has a Palestinian flag so the connection so that happens and the next thing you have is Hamas launching this disgusting attack upon civilian settlements in Israel with yeah. massive amounts this was a serious rocket launches but things like flying in on paragliders with machine guns and gunning down people in the streets Jews in the streets absolute just slaughter and it happens right after Antifa has two high-profile events, one in Hampden Park in Celtic and the other in London. And we all know it's, the, it's been well established that Antifa is, you know, unapologetically supports Hamas. What did they know? Did, ha did a were Antifa given foreknowledge? or forewarning of this attack by their uh, associates at Hamas. And why are they not being investigated? Why is Antifa not being investigated? Why are laws not being passed to restrict Antifa's movements, but laws are being passed to deal with an imaginary far right? Isn't it fucking interesting? We basically got confirmation this week that Antifa, a Glasgow Celtic, and by extension Sinn Féin, part of the same thing, probably had foreknowledge of the attacks on the Israeli citizens. And if Mossad were in Ireland right now, I'd be going, there's a people before profit, there's an Antifa, there's a Sinn Féiner. Do what you want, because they knew. And I'll give you an And then last night, and all, all day yesterday, Sinn Féin politicians and voters were posting photographs of themselves with the tea tail wrapped around their neck, going, our, our thoughts are with the people of Gaza. And now, of course, you do have sympathy for the innocent people of Gaza. And, um, yeah. But it was Hamas, that, Hamas the, the military wing, the current military wing of Sinn Féin, that did that that caused that horrific attack. And yet they don't care about the Jewish people in, in Israel, innocent kids, children, grand, grandmothers. No, they don't care about them. But they only they care about the, the, the people of the Gaza, who, and even though the attack came from Gaza, and Hamas overwhelmingly is supported by just about everyone in that shithole of Gaza. Where's the investigation into them? Where are the special committees and the special guard operations investigating the relationship between Sinn Féin, Glasgow Celtic supporters, Antifa and Hamas? Because we've been given absolute proof this week, but that don't, don't tell me there were happenstances, that there were, they were two high-profile Antifa events with massive publicity 
right before the attack on Israel by their by Sinn Féin's uh, military wing Hamas and then Sinn Féin every chance they get they're wearing burqas and telling and, and claiming they support the Irish people I mean I, I, there's more photographs of Mary Lou Macdonald looking like Sinead O'Connor than there is of her dressed as an Irish woman I mean the Sharouk Farouk, whatever the fuck I was calling her, saw before she died. Uh, 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 am I, you know, imagining this, you know? We have a direct, uh, spectacular causality between Antifa, Sinn Féin, and Celtic and an attack on civilian areas in, in the same time frame. And where's the investigation? No, far right, far right, you the far right, far right problem. Enoch Burke must die in prison. But the relationship between Sinn Féin, Antifa and Hamas, blind eye turned to it. And yet that actually results in deaths. What's going on here? Uh, the Irish government, you know, I, I, first thing I thought yesterday, if Hamas did what it did in Israel, and, and mark my word, that's coming to Ireland too. Sinn Féin jihadists will eventually be bombing and attacking Irish citizens. When, if that was to happen here today, Michal Martin and Varadkar together would be sending hampers to the local mosques saying we will protect the Muslims of Ireland at any cost. Uh, while you know, Irish infidels, women and children, their body parts are in the streets. That's how sick the Irish establishment is. And then they would pass laws to look for the far writers behind it. That's how sick this country is. That's how poisonous this country is. That's how sick and far it is from the line. Could you imagine Michael Collins worrying about Hamas? Worrying about, uh, you know, knackers with Celtic jerseys? throwing rocks at us, you know, Israel left Gaza in 2005 unilaterally and, and we're never back since. And the first thing Hamas did was to declare war and to exterminate the state of Israel. That would be like when the Good Friday Agreement happened here, Irish people voting for a party that, would, that was vowed to exterminate the Brit everybody in England. That's, that's literally what happened. And I know there's been bad things done by Israel, but that's that's war. But on accounts of everything, as a pagan, as a person who's liberally minded, for all its faults, Israel is the country that I will support in the Middle East. Simply because if I was to move there, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, in, I would be allowed to practice my pagan religion in peace. Also, I've met lots of Israeli people, and they've all been very nice, very nice people, and. A lot of them are quite shocked and hurt at how, when they found out that there was a, a contingency in Ireland that hates them for no reason. A lot of them like Irish music and food and and bands and stuff like that. Uh, you won't meet many people who care about Ireland. You know, when was the last time you saw a, a, a Palestinian giving a shit about Ireland? Never. 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 That's what all the truthers are like this morning. Holding their can of, of the truthers are like this this morning. They're holding. Oh look, I'm looking like Napoleon. They're holding their can of little discount lager. Uh, you know this kind. That's what they're doing this morning. The truthers, uh, the same ones who live in places like Rotherham and Oldham and Bolton and Manchester. And Blackburn and Accrington and had Ali and Faisal and Mufasa and Mohammed at the end of their street getting 12 year old girls from the neighborhood drunk and raping them were online going Zionist this and Zionist that while well, you know the sword of Islam down the road was penetrating their you know their 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 twelve year old niece. It's the Zionist. It's the Zionist. That's what they're not like. This. My luck, by having truth or like jihad this morning. You know, this is fifteen spliff of the day. Sheridan is a shield. My luck, That's what they're like. But a kind of lager. Yeah, 
on the can they're, they're they're all fired up. I won't even look at social media this weekend because I know all the truth is there. I'll be dancing on the graves of the innocent Jewish people that were killed by paragliding Hamas commandos because they were innocent Jewish people. It's one that weren't even military targets. War is one thing, you know. It's one thing to go after. It's one of the reasons I despise the provost. Provost made a provost <laughs> attacked more innocent English British people than I did. Uh, what you call it, British forces. They had to just concentrate on the British forces. That'd be fair enough, was but you know, and that it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And they're on their Celtic jersey, you know, like you know the the and this. Uh, that that's why so many Irish supports Hamas and want Israel destroyed, uh, because of San Glasgow Celtic, the knackers, the knuckle scrapers, yeah, and uh, like I said. Yeah, Israel's the only country in the Middle East that I would feel safe and comfortable in. For all its issues, it's the only one that extends freedom. Remember, Israel, and I, I don't like Nehanyan, who that's, I, I've never liked him really, but Israel was founded as a state for Jews, not as a Jewish state. But all the Arabic countries were all founded as Islamic republics, and you don't seem to, you seem to even think that. A state for Jews means that Jews can live there safely, along with other groups who do. But all the, they're surrounded exclusively by Islamic republics that have, with you know, even the one that was to try to be uh, secular, Lebanon, the, 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 you know, Hezbollah and Intifada took that one over and turned it into an Islamic republic too, by default. So you're surrounded by Islamic republics where you have to be basically a Muslim or you've, you're, 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 you've, no second, you've no status as a human being. And then the country in the middle that allows... Uh, even allows even the other side to vote in their country, gets has all, has all the truthers going <laughs> like that. The spliff flying out of their mouth, acrobatic style, the first of the fifty of the day. This is why I can't stand truthers. They're so fucking stupid. They are. They function on the same emotions that make Antifa types. That's why. That's why they all meet in the middle at Glasgow Celtic. They all meet there. That's why I hate Celtic and the supporters. Everything about that club makes me sick. Well, yeah, so we have the Antifa banner comes out. The very creepy, drony, robotically Antifa march in London. And then their military wing, Hamas, launches an assault upon Jews. Where is the investigation? Why is Antifa allowed to do what it wants while an imaginary far right has laws passed against it? And I remember their idea of far right is somebody who says, I think countries can take care of their own citizens and their own what happens in their own borders. That's that's far right. That you know the Irish government should look after Ireland. That that's that that's far right. Where um, these types who openly support a military organisation that yesterday killed hundreds of Israeli citizens, civilians is tolerated. Why is there no investigations into Antifa? Why is there no investigations into all these Irish politicians and people before Prophet Sinn Féin, etc., with Palestinian flags on their things when they've openly... Why are people not questioning these Sinn Féin politicians and supporters with the tea towel wrapped around... I mean, they have to laugh. This doesn't sum them up. Like, the, the tea towel wrapped around her neck, or his neck. Uh, it's, it's like the, 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 the mask... The photograph of the mask wearing the mask or the virtue signaling picture of the the rainbow flag you know see the rainbow flag exists let me tell let me explain to you see it's yeah it all comes down to this kind of witiko thing right the, as a sizable percentage of the human race has lost its soul it's lost its personality now what when someone has an attractive and charismatic personality And I'm not going to deny it because enough of you have said that to me. Uh, what do you call a person like me? Colourful. Thomas Sharon. I like Thomas Sharon. He's a colourful personality. I like Steve Hughes, the comedian. He's a colourful personality. What do you call someone and people like that? What do you call someone? I like John Waters. He's a colourful personality. In a different way, he's deep, and he's 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 deep, and he's more intensive, but and more kind of a lot more, you know, sage-like. 
but it's a colorful personality. What do you call somebody who has no personality? Someone who exists to virtue signal to compensate for the lack of personality by putting up flags and stuff on there. You call them dull. So if you're dull, how do you compensate for that? One more stripe on the rainbow flag. That's why dullards in the teaching unions and the civil service love the rainbow flag. Because they have dull pairs. They're dull. And so by adding another colour to the rainbow flag and putting another rainbow flag up, it allows them to believe they have what they don't have, colourful personalities. And that's where that all comes from. That's where all that comes from. A colourful personality derives from within, not from waving a rainbow flag. It's a compensatory insignia of what they are yeah. what they are so the world is upside down we know that it's upside down inside out and back to front okay those of you who are coming to see me in a couple of weeks at av13 and milton keynes you can still show up and pay at the door if you want it's going to be a great day and uh, i'll be there doing the talk and be there to hang out with Milton Keynes is one of the easiest places in England to get to there's a fantastic train service and bus service and motorway service and it's right in the city centre the the event so it's not like out in the countryside somewhere and I would love to see us all if you want to come it'll be a fun day but the the, the what my talk will be about will be that evil is real evil has taken over this world and uh, I'm th but the nature of that evil I'm still trying to work out now the world is upside down inside out and back to front and those of us who've maintained our humanity in the, the old-fashioned sense are declared the enemies of the of the world conspiracy theorists far rightists all these other things because we haven't joined the madness you know they use that biblical thing they've all gone down on the flood and we've we've we're on our own kind of arc you know, not using biblical analogy now. No, I'm not giving biblical scripture analogy, right? And it's obviously there's a spiritual force behind this. I mean, that was a that was incredible. I watched a film called Older Gods the other night. Now it's not. It's 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 a slow burn. It's a it's it's a fairly gory film, uh, but it really it really got me there. Because it was the first film I've seen. It's about a young guy whose friend, uh, William Duffy, Billy Duffy from the, the the cult of all things, who joined the band The Cult. He, he, get, he ends up in a cult and his, his American friend is trying to find out what happened to Billy Duffy. <laughs> He's still in the cult. <laughs> I know I have to laugh at that. I don't know if that was deliberate or not. But uh, it was... And he... Got, he, 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 he rents a cottage in Wales where where Billy lived and suddenly finds himself c connected and associated with all the the high strangeness that happened and it turns out that a a a pathological force called the origin is controlling humanity and causing chaos the same old it's a classic Lovecraftian type story and it's not like a spectacular or great movie by any sense, but I'll tell you something, it was the first film that really encapsulated how I felt during the lockdown. The sensation and the feeling that that got, well, and those of us who were watching my Rona Ironicles, as we were watching the world outside turn to, turn to like mist, insane mist, and people we knew take on new personalities because of the propaganda, it was the only film I've seen so far that encapsulated that feeling that I had inside. That's still with me. I'm still hurt and damaged by the lockdowns. I know I shouldn't be. I know I should be stronger. I want. I would like to be stronger, but I'm not that strong. I'm still. I still have a burning rage inside me over what they did to us, and I, I can't. I can't get over it. Because I saw what I saw, what really lies behind the, the I saw we, uh, you know, we saw just how, 
how brutal and blood covered and sharp and violent this steel fist behind the velvet glove of democracy. I've completely, I hate democracy, you know that, I'm an anarchist. I complete, I'm an anarcho-capitalist. I believe in private property, that the, the, the purpose of the court should be to uphold peaceful society and there should be no philosophical or orthodoxy towards the, the actual running of the, the, the state or the, the principality or whatever you're living in. And uh, as an anarcho-capitalist, I believe that the government is there to protect people who are achieving what they, get, what they want in life on their own terms and to leave them alone, but to protect them if anybody tries to take it from them. And also, if I do, you know, the, the breath on laws, the Wild West, medieval Iceland, the Anglo-Saxon England, all operated in the similar codes. Now, of course, they're a bit more violent than they are today, but they it wouldn't be like that now. It was a different world back then. But it's a, it's, it's anarcho-capitalism is what, is what I, a democracy. D d democracy gives us the tight likes of Macron, Trudeau, Biden, Varadkar, Jacinta Ardern. It's come out this week that Jacinta Ardern, her health minister in New Zealand, gave exemptions for the needlecraft. While the most oppressive nation on earth in terms of brutalizing its own people, Ardern signed off giving her own members of her own cabinet and healthcare service, top level people, uh, the right to not take the needle craft while she was on television with smirk on her face and that horse face of hers saying that anyone in New Zealand doesn't take the needle, they're not getting their life back. And then she suddenly resigns and gets this job as a top uh, propagandist in the WEF. It, 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 this is what democracy gives us, Dan Andrews. Democracy gives us these monsters. How anyone can still say democracy is the is the right system is beyond me. Democracy. This is the re democracy has given us all these beasts. We're we're let we're, these mediocre beasts that are running the world to the West today, and they're destroying the West. The West is in decline. Western civilization is ending, and it's ending because of this mediocrity that democracy is. For, here in Ireland, we we're, we're living with the legacy of basically the you know dynasties, political dynasties. Uh, idiot grandsons of politicians 50, 60 years ago uh, are now sitting there doing whatever the globalists tell them because they don't have any minds of their own. And they've just been primed from the time they were babies for their job. It's incredible. And that's what democracy is. Democracy is terrible, absolutely horrible. Uh, it's, it's, it, to me, it's an undefensible, it's an, it's an indefensible system of government. It's a form of mob rule catering to the lowest common denominator. And I'm no communist, but Karl Marx was correct when he said that the government's democracy's biggest failing was governments would use the national treasury to buy votes. And that's exactly what's happening in, in Ireland here with the new Irish. It's awful. And so there we talk about the freedom and democracy and there's Jacinta Ardern signing waivers on her top, on the top, the high pillai in New Zealand society while telling the ordinary New Zealander that uh, you're going to suffer if you don't take this, this needle craft. And then, of course, I remember reading those, those, those things online and lots of people in New Zealand going, she's the only leader in the world who sticks by her guns. How do you feel now with the AIDS and the T cells in your body collapsing? Uh, how do you feel? Jacinta is the only politician who really sticks by her guns as you've watched your friends die of turbo cancers from the needle craft, as your own T cells are collapsing, as you're still getting neurona. And you, do you still feel that way about her? Do you still feel that way about her? And the scary thing is, you probably do. Just like that, 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 that activist pair of Muppets in Brooklyn who the guy gets stabbed on the street by a, a by a by a, an African American guy, and uh, these are people. And then his girlfriend is is tech, basically text, standing there texting Black Lives Matter, while her boyfriend is bleeding to death on the street. And then his friends set up a GoFundMe account saying, "We need time off work. Will you pay us?" We're all working. Let me tell you, we're all working class people. There are no working class people living in those neighborhoods in Brooklyn. You need serious money to live in the neighborhoods those Antifa types live in Brooklyn. There are not a working class person among them. 
but this is what they're like. They don't even, they're not even good to each other. What chance would they have, these Bolsheviks have for the rest of us? But uh, again, natural law. You cannot go against natural law. You just can't. Eventually, the, the, well, what's going to happen in the West is going to be a complete collapse of civilization. That's what the natural law is going to be. Or Russia will invade. Or a Russia, Russia, China take over of the West will happen. But it's not going. To, it's not going to end well. What what the politicians of Western governments are doing now is not going to end well. And it took it took near chaos on the streets of Sweden. And the majority of the violent gangs are members of what religion? Well, the same ones that are paragliding with machine guns into Israel right now. Oh. That's what the Jews are like that now. They don't like you, they don't like you talking about the, the the religion of peace because they think everything is a set. Everything is, is Zionist. Dang, 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 all Zionists. But uh, they've had to put troops on the streets of Sweden now. Of course, the total blackout by the Irish media. It's funny, the, the Irish media are still reporting as if Trump is about to go to prison. That he's about to be arrested. You can see the you can see how the Clinton Foundation completely controls this country, particularly the mainstream media. Literally, all of them, the Irish Times, they wait there for the press release from the Clinton Foundation in Washington, so they can tell the Irish people what's the fact. Oh, and another thing I saw the other day, I couldn't believe it. There was a 1984 uh, Irish TV report on the music ma well music magazine Hot Press uh, that was that was on some YouTube channel. And uh, it was funny seeing Dublin in 84, but it was also, and it didn't show John Waters, but it showed an article he'd written as they were flicking through the pages as a, some, I don't know, well, some political thing on, by John Waters. And there was Niall Stokes, the editor, and he's still in charge of the, the magazine to this day. And he's saying, you know, when people read the Irish Times, they think it's the truth. They don't understand that it's an agenda. And I was like, well, fuck me. Here's the here he is it today exactly doing what he was complaining about in eighty four, uh, pushing the Clintons, pushing, uh, turning a blind eye to Obama's mass slaughter in Libya, and total establishment, and here he is saying back in eighty four, exact exactly what he is now that there's an agenda being pushed by the media, I mean the the, the complete lack of irony is incredible. I was actually watching that, wondering if Hot Press was a a, a setup from the start. Make it, you know, had me had me wondering that, you know, as a kind of like a change, an agency of change. It probably wasn't, but it, it made me wonder about that because there was, you know, there was Stokes railing against what he is himself today, the the orthodoxy, the establishment, were an agenda, and uh, got five hundred live listeners, Jesus. I just get more and more popular because I have a colourful person. Kind of fucking special brew. But yeah. And they all showed up my Facebook friend list last night. All, all the vicious anti-Semites all pretending to be. I'm not anti-Jewish, I'm anti-Zionism. No, nah, you're anti-Jewish, you just, you just say that. And they're uh, secretly loving the, the thought of all the Jews being killed by uh, Hamas. Because they're so st because uh, you know that's what they're like. It, it's easier to play. It's w when you have when you have grooming gangs at the end of your street, uh, raping and rogering twelve and thirteen year old gay b girls from your neighborhood. It's easier to blame Zionists on the other side of the world than Ali Faisal and Mohammed next door. Because you have to confront the evil directly. But the Wetiko inside you, the fruit Wetiko inside you, has you looking overseas. Because, well, basically they're all fundamentalist Christians anyway. Uh, that's what truthers are. And that's why if you look at all their, break, all, the, all their things that they, they attack are nearly always pagan. You know, it's, uh, and, they, and it's all based on Christian or biblical stuff. Again, a lot of it is Jewish, ironically. But... Uh, yeah, we're living in an amazing time. It's difficult, it's tiring, 
but uh, this is all part, Western civilization is now falling apart. There's no hope for Western civilization. It's gone. Now, when I say there's no hope, what I mean is that people like us, people like me and you, we are like the scribes of the, of the future days. When the pagan world collapsed, us making these videos and you watching my videos and talking about it amongst your families and buying paper hard copy books, we're like the last of the symposiums leaving Athens and walking towards Persia with the the what what, what the the thirty percent of the classical world's knowledge that wasn't destroyed by the iconoclasts were walking towards Persia with the last of it. So continue. Yes, it's over. Western civilization is done. Okay, it was killed by. Uh, mediocrity through political dynasties and corporate greed but grab what you can and i'll meet you in baghdad because we're going to keep it alive for future generations